Um, our last speaker is a, a friend of mine. Um, he's a motivational kind of person, which I think is what one of the reasons that I wanted him to to be uh, here and to talk. Unfortunately, he can't make it today. And last year he did a presentation in, in London and we have a copy of that tape and we're gonna show you that tape. Um, he's, he was sick that day as well. So he wasn't well, so you hear him coughing a little bit, but he was having a flu, but he'd flown from Vietnam to London to do that presentation and he was a real trooper. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanna say about him, but the most important thing, we talked about a lot of things today about sustainability but one of the things that we really haven't spent much time on is talking about what you can do to help others through work. That work is not, should not only be about you and what you get out of it or what your family gets out of it or what your colleagues get out of it, but how you can use business to do things for people that are need, need assistance or the people who are, are in need of things. And, Stanjeev, Stanjeev Bal, who's going to speak next, has always done this. He's always been an, a, an exemplary example of how business can be used to help others. Lately, he have, recently he became a B Corporation, and I recommend for all of you to read about B Corporations. Um, B Corporations are a special entity. There's only 1,800 of them in the whole world, over 53 in 50 countries. Um, it's, not a, it's not a common thing. A B Corporation is a, an extraordinary operation, very difficult to achieve that status. In Sanji's factory in Vietnam, which produces jeans, has reached that status. So please see his, see his presentation, enjoy his presentation, and start to think how you, when you go into business or you have a job, what you can do for others, not just for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Is it on? I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah, it is now. Well, before I start, I just wanted to check with you all, and you can raise your hands up, and let me know how many of you all have really connected within yourselves, and I mean connected with your own inner voice. None? There you go. I got one with an inner voice. I got a few more. OK. And. Um, Amongst the few of you who have realized you have an inner voice, I would like to understand if anybody out of you all have learned to trust that inner voice. Anybody? Brilliant. Amazing. Excellent. All right, then. So um, 19 years ago, Cytex was just like any other company on the planet. Uh, we built our business on a very simple model. One, one gene, a five-pocket gene, built out of one factory and one mill in China. We built a small collection, just a handful of us. No second guessing, I'm an Indian, not shy. Packed a bag with these genes, knocked on the doors in New York, in Broadway, until we got our first order. <clears throat> From that point in time till now, everything is just a blur. Very, very quickly, we found ourselves operating in nine countries. Countries like China, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Egypt, Madagascar, Jordan, um, Mauritius, and then finally in, um, in Vietnam. Now, we also had this unique opportunity to work with over 50 factories. Now, through all my travels, um, interestingly, what I found that stood out, unfortunately, was um, a system which was riddled with what I call modern-day slavery. Now, what I could really see around me was environmental damage. I could see very clearly that we belonged in a system that did not recognize you know, hunger and poverty. And um, you know, I've seen loads of places with uh, inadequate sanitation. And I had to participate in a society that was very exclusive. And we all had to pretend, play this uh, game of um, seeing no evil, speaking no evil, and hearing no evil. Now, over a period in time, 
I think the noise got louder. And between anger and confront, confrontation and you know, deliberations, um, what really stood out was there was no point fighting the system. But there could be, we thought, a unique opportunity to reset the whole landscape. So come 2010, what we did was we quickly disbanded everything that we had built, literally, because it just didn't make any sense anymore. What we did was we finally chose one location, and that's Vietnam. And why Vietnam? Because I found that country to have a very unique system which allowed women to have equal representation, their voice was heard, and they were treated equally. The economy was healing, and for more than one reason, you know, I went with my gut, and I thought this was the best place to be in. What we thought was, let's, let's start from scratch and build a brand new theory of change. And in the process of setting up this brand new theory of change, we had to build a brand new formula. A formula that extended way beyond cost. And the only input that we had to add to this mathematical equation was a very simple, a very simple um, term. It was called positive impact. And at that point in time, we did not know what the end result would be. It was an experiment. But we were hoping that one day, this positive impact added to cost could probably lead to a model of prosperity. You gotta put your money before you, know, you start rambling off. So what we did was we took 1% of our top line revenue and we plowed those funds into hunger and poverty elevation programs. We just tore down those white picket fences and we went down deep into the community. And we started participating in their lives. <laughs> Several years later today, you know, one of the key byproducts that we accrued from this system is empathy. I consider Cytex to be an extremely empathetic organization, and you'll see why. Now, Besides the 1%, what we thought is, let's tackle two problems. So we created two buckets. In one bucket, we put energy, and in the other bucket, we put water. These two buckets contained two very, very precious resources that our planet is totally dependent on. With water, I mean, today we recycle 98% of our water, the other 2% we evaporate, so we, we, we fought really hard to stay a zero discharge facility. Interestingly, by deploying innovation, green chemistry, and radical resource productivity, today we find that we have reduced the amount of water we, we consume by approximately 30%. That's about 300 cubic meters a day. We've been having this battle with the government to give us a license to export this water to drought-stricken areas. And this is something that we are really passionate about, and we'll fight till the end until we get this license, and we really get this water across to where we need to get it. Now, one of the most hazardous things that people don't talk about is sludge. Sludge is a byproduct from um, you know, the wastewater plants. <laughs> People come, pick up the sludge. You've got to pay them for it, by the way. And it ends up in a landfill. Landfills with sludge, they continuously contaminate the water table. This is how reckless we are. So what we did is we took a step back, re-engineered uh, our chemistry, and we produced non-hazardous sludge. With this non-hazardous sludge, we have the ability to make bricks. With these bricks, we build homes for the deserving, and we also ended up building a bleed certified factory with this waste. Interestingly, we never, we never ventured into it with uh, an Excel sheet with P&Ls and trying to figure out whether it's going to make money or not. But after six years, what we found is we had really, truly broken even. We had recovered our investments. 
The other bucket that I was talking about was even more simpler. We just went after the low-hanging fruit. We set up a very simple aerial drying system, which did not need energy. So we started drying our jeans up in the air. We started, um, you know, just recycling all our waste, steam, and heat. Threw away the fossil fuels. Picked up rice husk, furniture shavings, bonded them together, and built our own biomass material, and built this boiler that drives energy through waste. In our grid, we started investing into renewables with solar. We started integrating step by step, um, you know, solar power into electrical grids. Six years later, we found we broke even here as well. So we sat down and we said to ourselves, now that we are in the black, what do we do with the, the savings? We've just piloted a program which is yielding incredible results. We started gifting electric bikes to our workers. Now, it definitely helps us to reduce our footprint, our carbon footprint, but the other impact is that the workers do not have to spend money on fuel. And the results that we're getting back, I mean, it's amazing. Amazing, uh, you know, labor turnover is down. Uh, there's a lot more communicative processes and protocols that have been set up in the company. And people truly appreciate being part of uh, the organization. We've been encouraging our workforce to plant trees and educating them as to how important it is that we continuously you know, create a carbon neutralization strategy. It's all in our hands. These are all very simple things. In front of our factory now, we have a huge forest. Uh, you know, a forest that's going to make Cytex a carbon neutral company by 2023. This is one of my favorite projects. We took 5,000 genes rejected genes, tore them apart, built 5,000 uh, shoes out of those. In a collaboration and partnership with Puma, both the companies came to an agreement that we will not utilize the money for commercial purposes. It would only be not for profit. It was fantastic. We raised $250,000. And with that $250,000, we built an orphanage. A hundred and 50 children live there today with dignity. These are some of them. Unconditionally, they are, they are often at a, a job at Cytex the day they turn 18. And that's why, you know, I was saying Cytex is an incredibly empathetic organization. We didn't plan this. Trust me, this wasn't a plan. This was only, we, we just kept on doing what we felt was right. Forward uh, wind, earlier this year, we were certified as a B Corp. A B Corp is a business that works for purpose and profits, balances both. It's the highest standard of verified social and environmental stewardship. It holds you accountable, both with the public interface as well as legal accountability. And it just all came together that we were truly an organization that turned out to be a force for good. Now, we quickly forget about what happened yesterday and we never rest on what we did. 2019 onwards, we had to reconstruct the future. Of course, you know, we proved to ourselves, you know, that a responsible organization can be profitable. We proved to ourselves that waste can be an input, you know, for a factory. I forgot to mention, 
We have a farming department, 40% of all our land. Uh, you have greenhouse, uh, I mean, uh, greenhouses. We have three hydroponic containers, and we grow our own food. We also found that factories don't necessarily have to produce genes. The rest of the land can produce food. Food that can be used to fight hunger. Trees can be planted to fight climate change. And we also learned that we could, we could build communities. Communities which would be inclusive and that would help to reduce inequalities. So we said, what's next? So yes, a business can be a force for good and a business can be sustainable, but we got to be in touch and in tune with what's happening today and what tomorrow stands for itself. And there were a lot of these big words that were floating around. So we took all these big words and we just threw them against a wall and we said, all right, let's, let's try and figure this one out. Big words, like predictive, just in time, customization, upcycling, re-commerce, the consumer, acquire them, retain them, recurring revenue, a lot of big words. It took us a while to figure this whole thing out and we said, all right, let's take all these big words and connect these big words. Let's put these into little circles and widgets and let's, let's build our own theory of circularity. So this is what we got right now. Um, right at the top, we have a partnership with a cotton farm. This cotton farm is um, it's, uh, it's carbon positive. We're building a mill in Vietnam as I speak. Um, this mill would be, be vertical, totally integrated, from spinning to weaving to dyeing to finishing. The fabric that we build from a mill would get directly integrated into a manufacturing plant in Vietnam. And this fabric would also be used in a soon-to-open factory in Los Angeles. The materials that we would produce would also get injected into a platform that just launched two weeks ago. MWE stands for, it's a marketplace for emerging entrepreneurs. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. You know, people talk about wholesale, and they keep on saying wholesale is dead. And people talk about retail, and they say retail is dead. And everybody talks about online, online, online. But our theory of change is wholesale is not dead, and retail is not dead. It's just that the person who's been empowering it needs to be redefined. So what we've created is a brand new system which would allow anybody from a kid who's two years old down to somebody who's 90 years old to own their own business. So on this platform, what you would have is you could, you could come in, you, could, um, you would have access to inventory, be it t-shirts or jeans or shoes, whatever, all produced at Cytex, so you know where it came from. And um, you would have the ability to use the libraries to, to design, or you could come up with your own creative art and make something of your own. We would ship it, manage the logistics, do the marketing for you. You could, you could state your own price and make a profit. I think that's the new wholesaler and that's the new retailer. It's people like you who are going to change the dimension and the face of our business. We also invested in a project in Los Angeles. It's called uh, Italian Repair. What Italian Repair does is they take um, you know, garments from landfills or wherever, upcycle it, and make it into a piece of art. It's sold at a much higher price, so the value generation is much, much higher than where the journey began on the first purchase. You must look them up. It's incredible stuff. Two weeks ago, a factory in Thailand took off with an incredible technology. We managed to um, patent this as well. Uh, we have the ability to take waste textiles 
crush it into nanoparticles, fuse it and bond it together, and build a substance which is a substitute for wood. It's sexier than wood, and it would definitely compete with granite as well as marble. If you're building furniture, you're building facades, flooring, name it with whatever application that you can think of that, um, that wood could do. Now, all this needs to be verified. So we invested in a company called Fibertrace. And Fibertrace is unique because it allows embedding a pigment. It's a DNA tracking device, similar to what you have in banknotes. But this one's built for fibers. So everything that we make, right from the cotton farm downwards and upwards, would be embedded with this material. With a flick of an iPhone on your product, you could visualize through augmented reality the whole journey. A journey that would allow you to see where it was made, who made it, how was it made, and narratives, and stories that could be told to empower you to make the right choice and the right decisions. A few slides on you know, the components. That's good earth cotton, carbon positive, the mill in Vietnam with 40% of the land you know, for green, um, greenhouses. Um, I'll come back to this a little later. I don't think it's going to allow me, so you better see it. Oh, it did. Somebody listens to me. But um, yeah, so this is a glimpse of uh, the store. Um, uh, the model also incorporates um, a physical space, which is um, a digitized touch point allows you to customize on demand. Uh, that's a little bit about Italian repair. And I was talking to you about you know, the boards, uh, you know, what we're upcycling. This, this is something, what it looks like. That's the living testimony. It's uh, the facade of the Christian Louboutin store in uh, Dubai. It's weathered, uh, you know, there's been no rain and storms, but at least it's been shielded from the sun. That's one of the scanners that would allow, at the B2B level, to trace uh, the pigments within the, within the garments. That's fiber trace. Anyway, that's our theory of change for the future. Um, I've not signed any NDAs with myself, so I'm at totally free liberty to, to share everything. Well, one thing we take pride in is we are a completely open sourced organization. Completely transparent, completely open, and um, you know we 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 share everything openly. Um, what is Gulliver's Travels got to do with this? So here's what I'm going to leave you all with. I always encourage people to travel, travel extensively, um, travel extensively to learn and feel human nature and human behavior. Be prepared. Be prepared to get tied down. But do not get tied down for too long. Be in a position to untie those knots, knots of ideology, and, you know, wax the world. In your travels, do visit some animal farms. Animal farms which will show you societies different societies, whether they are capitalists, socialists, fascists, or even communists. It's very important to engage with each one of them. We live in a brave new world, so get used to it. Get used to a world where a country can spend $686 billion on military, but yet only $60 billion on education. A brave new world the 783 million of us live below the poverty line. A world where 1% of the richest control 82% of the value generation. And a world where just 20 fossil fuel companies account for one third of the greenhouse gases that are emitted. A world 
which will, by 2050, have about 10 billion of us. 143 million of them could be refugees from climate. A world where 26,000 species get extinct every year. So this is the dystopian truth. So I would recommend you look at building your own utopian society. A society which has equal respect and opportunity for every individual on the planet and guarantees safety, security, and allows human beings to live without fear. In your journey, learn to be happy. Happiness will dawn on you. Trust your inner voice. Listen to it. Don't listen to the noise. There's so much noise out there. Shut it out. There's so many directions. The path that people have followed, it's not necessary to follow that path. Listen to your voice and follow your own path. Learn to overcome obstacles. You'll have a lot of them. They'll be thrown right in front of you, like Andrew mentioned, chairs. There'll be a lot of them. But listen to your inner voice, have trust and faith in it, and you'll overcome those obstacles. Look down, don't look up. Look down and wake up every morning and say thank you for all the things that you have that most human beings do not have. Be content. Be compassionate. Be happy. You be making other people happy will eventually make you truly happy. Live a life of purpose, because one day we're all going to go away from here. The only thing that we can leave here is a legacy, a legacy that our future generations must be proud of. So once again, listen to your voice, cut out the noise. Be chivalrous. Don't forget about chivalry. Live in an imaginary world. Dream. Have your own visions. And don't be afraid when they call you a mad person who's chasing down windmills. Go chase those windmills. It's important. That's all I got for you. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay, well, that was our final presentation. I hope you guys have all enjoyed it. We're going to have a little ses session now with some of our speakers, and Andrew's going to come as well. Hi, Mariette, if you're with us as well, I think. But um, I hope you guys have all enjoyed that. I think, you know, that Cytex talk with them from San Sanjeev was so inspirational. I mean, when you couldn't join us live, we just said, we'll just play the old one, because it was just unbelievable. And it's not that old. It's only from, like, from like October. Um, but, yeah, Andrew... Any thoughts on like today? Oh, it's obviously, you know, it's, it's wrapped up now. It's quite cool. We managed it. Great stuff. Well, I'm really grateful for everyone, for Mariette's help, for Denise, for all, for Miguel, for all, Jacob, everybody who, who participated today and, and they're really grateful to the assistants. I hope the students enjoyed it. Yeah. I don't know if they realize that the people they're talking to are all kind of superstars in the industry and it's not yeah. easy to, um, to get them to, to teach you. But not only did they get them to teach them today, but they also have access to all of them because I'm sure every one of them will be happy to answer any questions anytime or through their careers. So that's also a great thing for the students. So I hope they enjoyed it. No, thank you so much. And obviously we're going to be doing another Transformers Ed, hopefully in October, if we're pending. If not, it'll be virtual again. So let's see what, see what happens. And you're doing another Transformers for the industry as well lay, later on this year, Andrew, yeah. right? So we're going we're gonna to do something in June. Um, we're going to do another Kingpins 24. It won't be quite the same style, but we're going to do another one in June and we'll, we'll also do a, a Transformers then, a B2B one, not a student one. Yeah. But students are welcome to come. Amazing stuff. Um, any, any comments guys from you guys, obviously like sort of like, sort of, sort of like Denise and like sort of like Miguel, you, you guys have contributed and also listened in. Any, any, any positives from, from, from today? No, I, th I think, as I said in the beginning, I'm so excited to be here and to share knowledge with, uh, well, all my colleagues that were speaking, plus all the participants. This is like, uh, you know, you give and you receive. So I received a lot today. So thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. So, so, so Mariette, uh, uh, how have you found today? Obviously, a lot of the students have come from like Europe. So thank you so, so much for that. 
Yeah, I think it's been really nice because we started basically with uh, Kingpin's 24. So it's already two days and this is the third day. Yeah. Still, there's new information. It's also interesting that there are so many things that you can, well, that you have to grasp that it's really nice that there's different people explaining kind of similar topics, but in a different way, which yeah. also gives you uh, the opportunity to, to come up with your own uh, opinion. And as Sanjeev said, okay, it's, it's about your inner voice. It's about looking down instead of looking up and trying to connect to what is really right. And uh, the only thing I wanted to add for next time is just a suggestion from my side, but also from my team, who thanks you very much because they learned a lot as well. It's a, it's a crash course again on denim. Um, what about the women speakers? Could yeah, no, that's something I think, you know, I've had a few, I'm on a WhatsApp group. I'm in a WhatsApp group in the UK with like 15 other denim designers. They're like, what's going on? I mean, do you know what? We did have a few, a few people dropped out as well. Um, yeah. It's just unfortunate. Think well, actually, Maurizio, Maurizio um, replaced one woman speaker off the bat. So that's not our doing. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I got I got some abuse for it actually, but I, I, but we're going to make it better. They're definitely um we'll get hopefully a good very good ratio of women. Even even in my group, they're like I can give a talk, and I went okay. Let's just uh, get Andrew involved and get like Miguel involved, and yeah, let's get these get these amazing girls to speak as well. Absolutely. So yeah. Very good. Cool. <laughs> That's a good suggestion. Well, uh, it's, it's uh, educational. It's Transformers CD educational, and it's meant to be educational for the for the students, of course, but. As Denise mentioned, it's also educational for ourselves. I mean, when I listen to uh, Jacob or, or Maurizio and that, I, I learn. I mean, this is the kind of thing, this is one of the good things most in on denim. You keep learning all your life. Oh, <laughs> it's endless. I know, that's crazy. We all learn, we, no matter how old you are, you just keep learning. <laughs> I learned so much from both Jacob and Maurizio. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, um, it's a great feeling, you know. It's, um, so you're doing something that you like, uh, at the same time you get a, inspiration and, and message and you can use this knowledge for other things in in your career so uh, yeah i, I, also, I think it's, it's a great idea i also like being um people like correcting me when i make a mistake i, I don't get upset <laughs> I, I, thank you for correcting me honestly it's like thank you for i was i was on a whatsapp group with michael from lensing yesterday and he corrected me on something i went thank god you corrected me because i'll say it <laughs> and I'll, I'll educate loads of students saying it so thank you so yeah always educate and correct people as much as we can it's important to do that um amazing well, well i don't know what else to say really it's been a fantastic i've really enjoyed hosting it thank you so much yeah. andrew and, and the team and and also like sort of like also sort of like sort of like joanne as well in in the background uh, djing i think she did yes we need to give job. a big applause to joanne yeah for the last she, days, she, she has to like, show her her face come on you would just see the, the the logo I don't know, she looks great but yeah, anyway but thank you so much for that she, um, she, um, she's too shy maybe i don't know <laughs> But you know, um, thank you so much, guys. Just want to say also one thing. It's like sort of like sort of sort of the start of like Ramzan today. So all of our all of our friends in the Far East and who are like sort of like sort of like observing, uh, uh, the, good luck for the next thirty days of fasting. And I hope it all goes well. But um, thank you so much, guys. It's been epic, been epic. And um, I'm there have been some questions as well. I think most of them have been answered. We did most of them live. There might be a few. And of course, um, we'll make sure on the Transformer site, a lot of the contact details are there for the speakers. That might be easier, Andrew, right? Yeah, and you that. can give up my address to anybody who has a question and I can pass it around or there whatever. There you go. So send, send any questions to Andrew and he'll get it to the uh, relevant person. And then, uh, then they won't be like mail, uh, mail bombed by like 50 students asking the same question. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. I don't know what else to say. It's been great. I've really enjoyed ho hosting it. And uh, hopefully see you guys again in the next Transformers Ed in October. In person. Perfect. In person. Bye. Thanks okay. very much. Bye, guys. <laughs> cheers. Bye. Cheers. Thanks all. Thank you.